Welcome back. Today's episode in our AI Code Assistant series puts GitHub Copilot through its paces with Selenium. While you'll see some familiar tricks from previous videos, I've got new techniques lined up for you too. One of the handy tricks I've used in past videos is generating test data. This time, let's whip up some valid and invalid US social security numbers. By the way, we'll be using Python, but everything here applies to Java as well. And there they are, just like that. These are ready to drop right into your test script. If you needed more, like emails, zip codes, or banking data, Copilot can handle all that in a snap too. I've already got a test target set up for us to create a test script using Copilot. You've probably seen me do this in other videos, but it's always worth testing out because every code assistant handles it a little differently. Some do it better, some not so much. First, we need to write our prompt. For this demo, we're testing social security numbers, but the AI will need to fill in some legal data for other fields too. I like the way the attachment files are added to Copilot prompt. Interesting. When I asked Copilot to create tests for different valid and invalid social security numbers, it only gave us one test case for each. Looks like our AI overlord hasn't been generous with the test data. Let's try a little polite persuasion, nicely of course. These sentient animals have feelings too. Alright, now we're in business, we've got more test data. One more thing, I like using the PyTest framework, so let's ask Copilot to change the code accordingly. Time for a code review. It's always good to check if the locators and assertions are in line with what they should be. Hold up, Copilot threw in a time sleep. That's not great news. Fixed time waits make test suites slow and flaky. If any Copilot devs are watching, I'll just say that other code assistants have figured out how to avoid time sleeps. Don't get me wrong, Copilot is a solid AI and I'm sure these will disappear soon. It's just important to eliminate those unnecessary waits, since flaky tests can make automation pointless. The test target address needs updating. Rather than including it in the prompt, it's faster to just change it in the code. For larger test sets, you'd probably have a prompt template where you'd specify these details. The test passed, but since we're all test pros here, we need to make sure our assertions are working by making the test fail. I'll fast forward through this part, since it's just a quick but necessary check. Perfect. Assertions are working as expected. Let's take it up a notch and see if Copilot can modify this test to run as a cross-browser test. That looks promising. I'll grab this section and swap it into our test. I know this is the only piece we need to update, but you could replace the entire test if you wanted to. After running Chrome tests, Firefox kicks in smoothly. Next up, let's see if Copilot can add screenshots for visual comparison.
Okay, so it added screenshots for error cases. That's cool, but what I had in mind was comparing screenshots to ensure the page looks visually correct. The script it gave us won't work since it's comparing a screenshot to itself. But no big deal, it's a solid starting point. You just need to change the second screenshot file name to a reference image. You can get reference images by running the script without removing screenshots. Even though the tweak wasn't perfect, this is still more efficient than hunting through Google for example scripts. Now, let's check out the basic feature everyone expects a code assistant to nail. Code completion and suggestions. Just write something in the editor and you see the suggestions as gray. Press tab to accept the suggestion. Looks like Copilot is suggesting I create a test for invalid ages next. Yes please. That's definitely something we want to cover in our test set. Looking at the suggested test, those ages aren't actually invalid. Good suggestions though, since you might expect an age range of 18 to 100, but our HTML allows 1 to 120. Let's use 0 as an invalid age instead. Keep in mind this is just code completion. We didn't provide a proper prompt with HTML attachments. Another thing, the error message Copilot generated is only partial. Let's fix that real quick. We'll skip the other tests, but notice how code completion speeds things up. And there we go, it passed. For newcomers to test scripts, any code assistant is incredibly helpful for locating web elements. Just toss the HTML code into the chat and ask how to find a locator. By the way, check out all these handy features in Copilot's right-click menu, explaining, fixing and more that we'll explore shortly. So let's ask Copilot to find the name field in the HTML snippet we sent to chat. You can also ask Copilot to format it differently if needed. One quick note, I don't recommend using XBaths since they're browser-dependent slower and might break when the HTML is updated. For beginners, another awesome feature is how Copilot can help with assertions. Let's say we have a name return value and we want to make sure it's not empty, not longer than 50 characters, doesn't contain special characters or numbers, and each word starts with a capital letter. This isn't exactly a real assertion, but we're just adding complexity to see what Copilot does. And there you have it, four assertions. At first glance, they seem to cover all our requirements. The last one is a bit more complex, but it looks like it does what we asked for. Now, let's see what the Generate Tests feature does. We can then discuss if it would be sufficient to cover all the testing of our target. Copilot generated four tests, and they look pretty solid. I like it, even though it's not quite what a seasoned tester might end up with. Personally, I plan my testing while browsing the UI, jotting down observations, and focusing on what's rendered on the screen. While this is a fairly lightweight test set, it's still useful. AI tools are evolving fast, and in the future, they could offer testers valuable insights on what to focus on. Looks like the indentation is off, let me fix that.
let's see if these tests run. There's an error saying address 123 should be invalid, actually that address is valid, the only check is for empty values. The main point here was to see if the tests run, and they did. If we wanted a more comprehensive set of tests, we could have generated them by including the target web page as well, and maybe some additional requirements. Another cool feature, whether you're a newbie or experienced, is Copilot's ability to explain code. If you're looking at someone else's code with no comments, just ask the AI to break it down. This feature is great for speeding up the learning curve for new testers. You can also use explain to understand parts of the test target. While that's not always the tester's job, I often find myself digging into the test target to verify what's happening on screen. For example, if you're trying to figure out what a regex pattern does, Copilot can explain it in plain English. Now let's try fixing an error. I'm going to create one by replacing request with driver. Let's see if Copilot catches it. There it is, the error and the fix. Copilot nailed it. If you need automatically generated documentation for your test set, you can have that in no time. Finally, let's talk about how you can get all this wizardry into your own dev environment. Head over to Visual Studio Code Extensions and search for GitHub Copilot. Click Install and it will redirect you to GitHub Authentication. If you don't already have a Copilot subscription, there's a 30-day free trial. Just be ready with your credit card info. You can cancel anytime, but if you like it, Copilot will start charging after the trial. That's a wrap for today's tutorial. I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, share it with your fellow coders. See you in the next one.